All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this piece of C-beam off. I just had that there for kind of illustration uh, of where we should be. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is mount two of these on the back side of this loosely, get it mounted on the beam, uh, more 90s on the back side. I'm going to also do the next clamp, same way, kind of loose fitting. I'm going to end up sliding the spindle in there. And then I'm going to tell you exactly how much you need to really pay attention to this section. The, the CNC will work great if you just kind of run through it real quick, but it's really important that the spindle be very true. There's a reason I'm not having you install this after the kit's operational. It's it's uh, so much more to fight. These things are heavy. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and do it right now. I'm gonna slide a couple of M5 T-nuts in the outer slot. Ooh, too far. All right, and just picking a random spot. We're not going to have it Finally, rest there. I'm gonna go ahead and drop one of these black 90s on there. These are where the M5 by 8 come in handy. Uh oh. I'm not gonna tighten that a lot. You see, it still moves around. You probably don't want to knock the clamp over like me. Uh, just probably be a little cooler. That was kind of loud. All right, got those two going on. Let's go ahead and put this on here. Now the clamp itself should be the same width as the C beam. This is one of the tools that we have to use to square things. Probably see right now from that angle that I'm not completely true. So some of it's a little just, it's, it's actually just visible. But anyway, I don't have to be exact with that just yet. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and run a couple of these screws in here. These are the M5 by 10s. The clamp's threaded, so. I'm just going to go ahead and run them in there.
Hopefully so far, let us know it out, right? All right, um, a thing about spindle height on this particular piece of C-beam. Um, I built this entire machine to sit on the spoiler board. Eric does have a revision to the corner pieces where you can frame it up. Um, if you do that, we got to watch for the wide deflection. It needs to be supported. But either way, um, with this right here, it, it use this to set the height of the spindle. Now ideally, when we're machining, we never want the base, even when the end mill is fully buried, to drag across the work surface. And we have a pretty thick, we'll use the standard open built C-beam end plate here. We have a pretty thick end plate down here. It's a little over half an inch. Uh, I believe it's 40 millimeters. So when you place this, think about what you're going to be machining. If you're going to do something where the spoiler board is lower for some reason than the Y gantries would typically have it, then you need to have the spindle farther down. If you're going to be machining as it's, as I've got it laid out where it mounts down on the spoiler board, we simply need to make sure that there's a little gap in between the base of this and the base of the uh, end cap here. So I'll kind of show you more about that when we get down to the final spot. We, we are going to spend some time squaring this up. Uh, you'll set it to a certain height. I'll give you a slight recommendation. Play with it after that. Um, but if you have to change it, I highly suggest taking this beam back off the machine and laying it on a flat surface. It's a lot easier to get everything adjusted here. Alright, so let me show you how to do that part. Alright guys, so now I'm going to go ahead and stab the spindle. These clamps should just be loose enough to get the spindle through, as you can see. Luckily these aren't chrome polished spindles, but I really like them pretty snug. Yours may not be exactly that tight. I'm still playing with the, uh, the file on these. So, what I like to do here is I have a machined edge on the bottom of the spindle. It's a pretty good reference. I mean, I'm machined against flat surface there. So, this is a pretty good reference. And I'm going to go ahead and use that to set this bottom half. Uh, what I'm going to basically do is take that lower edge that's on the 800 watt spindle and I'm going to match it up with the flat surface of this clamp. Let's see if I can get a little closer there. That'll zoom in. So you can see where I'm at in the clamp. Now, we're not in relation to this just yet, but with the clamp, I can see all the way around it and I can tell if I've centered around that bottom piece. All right, so I can tell I need to go just a little bit farther. There we go. Now I with the clamp on, I just see the lips. Sorry, I had kind of still the spotlight there for a second so I could see. Now that I've got that set, I'm going to go ahead and, oops, with my regular Allen wrench set, go ahead and tighten down this bolt. Oh, I still got that on. I hadn't, I hadn't tightened the bases yet. I'm just right now just going to tighten this. Alright. So that's tight. Now it's not going to move in this clamp anymore. I do have freedom back here. So I want to take and bring this down till basically the edges 
are touching and again and again this is kind of this is just a location to put it at right now this will work this will get you cutting I would advise once you get into cutting learn what you like there is a reason you'd want it higher up when you go to change end mill and or or you know go to a thicker piece of material there there is a reason to be higher up on the seat beam even when it's mounted to the base but all right so I'm kind of checking this out I can fill them a little that way so let me loosen this up a touch as the, the clamps are the same width as a C-beam so it's easy to get a nice flat surface there and I'm just going to go ahead and tighten down the M8 or M5 by 8 here same on the other side this one feels good of course tighten down these bolts all right so that's snug now that's tight our spindle is already extremely firm, but let's back it up and add another one. We want to take and stick this one again up on that upper machined edge up here. So this part is stainless and this is like a chrome plated piece. And there is a separation line with the machined caps on the spindle. And so I'm just going to take and run the clamp right up to that again looks good drop that M5 by 45 bolt in tighten the crud out of either one of these even though we're you know where there's plenty of support on the spindle with the end caps and everything you don't want to go crazy with these just you know snug them up really well but don't don't just keep going until they strip out it is aluminum and we also don't want to hurt the spindle all right so I'm going to do the same thing back here now this one's got just a slight bit gap I can just apply a touch of pressure and it's straight. Uh, it touches the level. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it in the camera, but there's just a little bit of bit of gap. And if I move it over just a touch, it's straight. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Well, and actually, it's touching now, so that was it. Tighten these down. These are the M5 by 8. So, now we got our spindle on, very firmly mounted. Um, you could do this before, or do it now either way. What I do, what I want to do is roll both the water hose pipes down to, you know, about either 8 o'clock, 
five o'clock, six o'clock. I want the hoses to be close to the z-axis. So all I gotta do now is loosen this back off. I kind of like doing it after just to make sure there's no weird stresses in the clamps. And as you can see, there's not at all. I'll go ahead and place this one about right here. Our clamps look great. They're perfectly aligned with everything. So, as I said, this is really hard to do when it's already installed because you're kind of fighting gravity it wants to roll off there's a slight bit of adjustment in these in these black 90s so it's just easier if you ever have to do this again for maintenance or to change out the spindle or to change the bearings in the spindle whatever it is I highly suggest just taking the entire Z off so guys that's about it uh, it wouldn't hurt to take and perform some visuals maybe get a square double check everything it's very important your quality of cut really depends on how square this whole assembly is so we really want this to be good and true with the c-beam with all the wheels that we got on the extra on the other plates we're not going to have a big issue with uh, with it drooping or sagging or anything and you can still see this moves by gravity that's the way we want it but we're getting really close now looks pretty good all right well guess we should get on to the next step